Uh, but welcome everyone. So lovely to see uh, lots of you here this evening for This Is Us. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Iona. I'm the volunteer development worker at Maidhill Parish Church. So we decided a few months ago that we would like to celebrate some more of the, the volunteering stories that is going on in Mary Hill. Um, so each month we take one evening to, to get to know someone a bit better, hear a bit more about their volunteering journey. And this month Eileen is doing the honours. We're very grateful to Eileen. Um, so we'll get started. Eileen, uh, can you let us know how, how did you get started volunteering? What was your the beginning of your volunteer journey? I um I went to when I went to school in Manchester, um, they had a connection with a home for a holiday home for disabled people down in London. And they were always looking for students and um, police cadets and what have you to go and help. So because I went to a convent, it sounded like a good way of meeting men. So <laughs> I volunteered to go and that was my my first volunteering experience, I suppose. And I quite enjoyed it, enjoyed the work, enjoyed the camaraderie. And so that kind of was how it started. But then I began training as a nurse here in Glasgow and there weren't the same, there wasn't the same time, not the same opportunity um, to volunteer. So I really didn't come back to it till much later when I'd stopped working and had a little more time on my hands. Fair enough, fair enough. I think you were doing a bit of volunteering where you, just before you retired. Um, yes, I had, um, yeah. Yes, I did. Yes, I had a, I have a daughter, for those of you who don't know, I have a daughter, Gemma, who's now 40, a lady with learning disabilities. But when she was coming up to leave school, um, we were looking for some extra help and support in trying to um, move to the right uh, next placement sort of thing. And I kept coming up against this brick wall from social services who kept telling me that, ah, but you know, you're not really Gemma's advocate. You may be her mother, but you're not her advocate. You need to have somebody who is independent and entirely for Gemma. So I went to this organization looking for somebody for Gemma. Um, and what happened was I didn't get anybody for Gemma, but I ended up becoming somebody else's advocate, somebody who had no family. What okay. have you. So, so I was kind of dragged in through the back door. And I... I really, really enjoyed that because I could stop thinking about what suited family and what have you and really just concentrate on this one person. And she was a lady in her 30s with Down syndrome, but no, um, no vocalization other than she was very noisy. And she liked going into Central Station because she got the very best kind of noise inside a station. So she was just a, she was just a real character. And um, I was her advocate for a number of years um, until sadly she passed away. She got early dementia and then she got an infection and she was in hospital and it was, was difficult, but she passed away. But because I'd become involved with the organisation, um, they invited me to join their management committee based in Edinburgh. And they were a wonderful group of people who did incredible work. And I was just kind of in awe of a lot of the stuff they did. And, and I started to volunteer with them in Edinburgh and in Glasgow. And that was a very, very happy period and enjoyed it, helping to recruit other volunteers, recruiting staff, and things like that. So that was good. I did a bit of advocacy for other people with disabilities. And so were you an ad advocate at the same time that you were on the board or was it kind of once you finished you uh, moved it on? It was pretty much after I'd stopped being my partner's advocate I became I moved on to the the board there and I think you know my own experiences with my daughter uh, plus I have a, a cousin a lady with um, learning disabilities for whom I'm her uh, power of attorney and um, she lives down in the borders and sadly she's a bit older than I am and she's now developed dementia on top of her learning disabilities yeah. so I kind of look after her affairs and I'm still guardian for my daughter but you know you're always kind of looking for what happens when you're no longer available for someone to be 
looking out for them in the future. And I hope somebody will come along and do those kind of tasks for these people in the future. That's um, quite a lot to have on your plate, to say the least. Do, do you find that um, volunteering in a, in a similar role to your family life, did that uh, help because you had shared experiences or did it become quite a lot of the same thing? No, no, I think it helped because of shared experiences, bit of experience with working alongside care organisations, working alongside um, social services, housing, benefits. You, you found you'd picked up a lot over the years of, um, and a lot of it was very different, but there were, you know, um, threads going through it that were common to everybody. And so that was, that was quite good. So in later life, uh, when I really did retire, I, I hadn't done terribly much church-wise for a very long time. And I decided I would um, take myself along to Immaculate Conception. And I found that they were a very welcoming crew and they were keen to involve people. And so I started through there um, doing a little volunteering with them. And um, really, you know, it's such a joy to work alongside the people I've known there and a whole load more friends and what have you. And then from that comes other things like Mary Hill Parish Church and so on and so forth. Mm. Mm. Did you... Um... When, when you started going to the Immaculate again, did you, did you want to, to get involved in things? Were you looking for things to do with this, all this free time that you suddenly had, suddenly had in retirement? Or were you kind of dragged in yeah. kicking and screaming? No, 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 not, not dragged in. No, I wanted to do something. And there were a couple of things that came up and I thought, oh, I quite like that. But I volunteered and, and for some reason it didn't uh, pan out. But I had been helping some friends who I'd been at university with, with... Um, cleaning uh, and then one of the weeks they were looking for more cleaners for immaculate conception i thought well i'm already doing that i might as well i might as well join and do it there and i i'm now part of a group of about 12 when times right. are good that that clean immaculate conception and they're a lovely crowd and i have to say half of the fun is the uh, companionship the coffee the chat uh, and all the rest of it so yeah <laughs> so it's not it's not I, all I, just I hard of, work <laughs> oh no, no no certainly not certainly not uh, enjoying that uh, and then having joined there um they were the, the girls when i say girls some of these ladies are in their 80s uh, the girls there were quite good at saying oh well why don't you think about doing this or why don't you think about doing that so gradually i i started to do a little more um, and I'm, I'm a reader on occasions and they have a minibus at Immaculate Conception, which you may be aware of. It's a bit of a disaster at the moment, but at the time, um, they, they had it on the road and they were looking for volunteers uh, to take part in a rota to bring people in, vulnerable and elderly people in to the church for um, mass on a Sunday. So, uh, so I did that and, and I quite enjoyed that. It, it, was a, it was an experience. The minibus is not the easiest vehicle to drive, um, but you know, it was good and all the rest of it, just short journeys. I've even taken my sister when we had to go on the rounds and I would drive the bus and she would run in and get the people. And, you know, we did all that kind of thing. So that was, that was good. I enjoyed that. And then I think I, that was about that time we were involved in a bit of the ecumenical group alongside Mary Hill Parish Church. Um, in fact, there's a lot of people at Immaculate Conception think that I am from Mary Hill Parish Church. <laughs> You're, that oh, you're, Mary you're certainly a, a powerful <laughs> force behind the ecumenical group. Um, what sort of drew you towards wanting to be a part of that? And like, what, you know, what's the kind of importance of the group to you? Oh, I'm hugely of the opinion that the churches should be working very much more closely together um, because we all have a common sort of goal and uh, beliefs and, and um, you know, philosophy and, and uh, it just a kind of an out, I, I feel it's time that churches stopped inward looking and started doing an awful lot more outward looking um, activities. And so I think there was some meeting that was held at Immaculate and they asked there were there folk who might be interested in an ecumenical group and myself and a number of other people, people like Mark, um, had joined that and Jane and uh, yourselves obviously from 
uh, Mary Hill Parish Church. And, and it, it, they're a really, really nice group who've organised a number of different uh, events, some of them social, some of them worship, some of them kind of outreach to the community. And that's been, I think, really important. And it, it's been difficult, obviously, over um, lockdown to kind of keep that sort of thing going. So anything that kind of sparks up um, more sense of community it just has got to be has got to be the right thing we kind of grandly call ourselves maybe hill churches together which which kind of rankles a wee bit because i think there really is just you and us you know, immaculate <laughs> and maybe hill parish church but it's really nice if we get um, other folk joining in from time to time there's been a few yes. from Gilbraid and what have you um george and helen from Gilbraid, yes. and of course i've got to meet them again down in um St Gregory's at the food bank so mm -hmm. um, it, it's just a, a really lovely group to be part of. Mm. And we naturally had to take a bit of a break um, with mm. the pandemic uh, but we just had our first event together again uh, in yeah. just last week there for Christian yeah, Unity Week. Yeah. How, how did you find the experience um, online and do, you know organising it online, offering it oh. online? You know me, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a control freak. <laughs> so, so I was, I was anxious because I know how much work goes into these, and it was fantastic that that um, you know the members of the group really pulled out all the stops and one thing or another between Mark and Victoria and all the rest of it, just pulling it together. I tell you, all these ecumenical services, we do it a few times a year, and I'm absolutely knackered at the end of it, and I think, God, I don't know how Stuart and Jim do this week in, week out, service after service, but it's um, it it fulfilling because it look they make it look so easy, and it's anything but easy. I, I, I'm in awe of these guys that do it regularly. Yeah, yeah, we are right. blessed to have them. But it's it's nice to have what the, you know what the group bring um, every now and again to to yeah it's different. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, so you've. Uh, I think through the ecumenical group, I think I got to know you through the ecumenical group, and I can't remember what the exact first thing was. But yes, I think that was it. We started with the ecumenical group, yeah, and then then they were looking for volunteers for Mary Hill Memories, right. and and that has been an amazing, uh, amazing activity that I, I thoroughly enjoyed. They used to meet twice a month and uh, over in Mary Hill Parish Church and and do various um activities, cup of tea, a chat, all the rest of it. Um, but you were looking for more bodies and sadly we didn't get a lot of bodies. Um, but I was aware that you were, a lot of people that, that came to Mary Hill Memories maybe came in a taxi and, and that was using up quite a bit of your funds. So uh, Father Jim very generously lent us the minibus um, to go and pick people up. I'm a bit resistant at the beginning because you, you don't know how folk will feel about that. Not everybody was fit enough for the minibus no. uh, and what have you. But by and large, it, it worked really well. Um, on a good week, we'd get maybe 13 on the bus. Um, and it, it was, you know, it maybe took a while to pick everybody up and bring them in. But the noise of the chat and the conversation in the back where people renewed friendships and it was just lovely. It was mm. so nice. Um, and as you drove around, you'd maybe go a slightly different route and folk were saying, oh, I went to school there. Or this is where <laughs> I, married, I got married and my husband's family lived up that road. And it was just a, a lovely, another mm. dimension to the um, mm. Mary Hill Memories um, activities yes. which which was good not everybody as i say always liked it on the bus because i know you know it's uncomfortable to sit for some time but generally the ones who were on the bus you know they, did they remarkably it. well we should, and it's um, nice to drop yeah 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 i should clarify for those who don't know their Mary Hill memories is a group for uh primarily aimed at seniors and a lot of the people who came mm -hmm. along uh were stuck in the house and some, for some of them, that was the only time that they got out in the fortnight was to come along. And the difference being that we provided transport to get them there. So the minibus was a, a massive part of that. And we're very grateful to you uh, for driving it. Because I know it was about an extra hour and a half before and then again after, I think, 
the, to mm -hmm. go around and drop but, everyone off. But again, there was Anne as well that helped and, and you know, there were people who were the escorts on the bus that were great. So it was really, it was really, it was a good resource for us and uh, yeah. uh, happy to do it. Mm. Oh, well, it was, <laughs> it was very much appreciated when we were able to do it. And uh, for, if anyone, um, if we're ever able to play bingo again, um, Irene <laughs> is an excellent bingo caller. <laughs> Other people gave it a shot. Eileen was always re-requested. <laughs> she knows all the special bingo numbers. <laughs> no, it's my misspent youth coming to the fore. <laughs> mm. um, so obviously that's a, an, another group that's had to come to a, a stop um, in the current mm. circumstances, mm. given that everyone who came along was... Uh, in the vulnerable and shielding category. Mm. Uh, so what, hap mm. what happened to the group after um, lockdown started? Oh, oh yes. Um, what happened was that there was a number of ladies and, and a, a few gentlemen, and the, the list was divvied up between the volunteers and we were asked to contact people and sort of just make sure they were okay. And not to my finest hour because Believe it or not, I, I don't generally like to chat. I like to do more than I like to chat. And I, I'm a doer and what have you. And, and phoning up week after week, I found really quite tough because, you know, all they wanted to know was when will it start again? When will you be coming to pick us up again? What are we going to do? How are we going to manage? And do you think they'll ever start again? And it was really, I found it really, really difficult because... I couldn't see an end in sight. Here we are nearly a year down the line. And to be honest, do any of us really see an end in sight, a resumption of normality? I suspect not. So I found that really quite hard. People, people were struggling with it and, and they were much more isolated than they had been before. And I, I, I just found it so difficult. And so that's one aspect of my volunteering that I really, I really found tough. And I had, I had to come to you and say, ask me to do anything you want. I'm a doer. But sitting down and chatting to pe people week in, week out was just not my thing. And I suppose maybe it's important to know what your, your strengths are and, well, and what, yes. what your weaknesses are. Well, and I really appreciated um, your honesty with that. I think it's really important a lot of the times with volunteering, especially volunteering with a church, people feel that once they've signed up, they're there, they're there till they die, basically. They can't possibly step, step down. So I think it's really good mm -hmm. that you were, you felt able to say, actually, I'd rather not, I'd rather not do this. This isn't for me mm -hmm. right now. And I think mm -hmm. that's important for everyone mm -hmm. to know that when they're doing something, that it's okay to not do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it for a while, but I, I definitely, every day I was thinking, oh God, I've got to go make these phone calls again. It's going to be more of the same. And it's just, you know, it, it, I just but found it that's tough. That's not you know, what you do to be able to. volunteering for. Like, you know, no, that's not what I do. No, like, obviously, um, you are volunteering for other people, but you're also volunteering for yourself. Mm -hmm. And if it's bringing, you down, bringing you down and it's mm -hmm. not what you mm -hmm. want to do. Mm -hmm. But you have been keeping yeah. busy no. during the pandemic. What, oh, yes. what have you been doing? Yes, I have. Well, again, that was down to Mary Hill Parish Church, would you believe? Um, <laughs> there had been a, a nursery around, is it Bell Craig Nursery around near Asda? Mm -hmm. uh, that at the start of the pandemic, they had to close and uh, Jim Hamilton was going round because they had a lot of food that they weren't going to be able to use, more than one car load. And so because I had access to a car, uh, would I come and help take the stuff from there down to St. Gregory's Food Bank? Now, I'm absolutely black affronted and ashamed to say I never even realised there was a food bank at St. Gregory's down in the Wineford. Um, so I went along and helped Jim and we got all the stuff in the vehicle, took it down to St. Gregory's and um, they apparently have had this food bank there. It's an independent food bank, nothing to do with the Trussell Trust. Mm -hmm. They'd been going for about three years and it was manned by um, volunteers there in Father Allen's home. Um, and basically uh, they, they had been running it out of a small room and they had been in the habit of maybe 
preparing about 70 bags on a, a busy week for the local, generally single men in the Wineford who, who had various issues. Um, and they would come down, they were open five days a week from 10 till 12. And the guys, there were two fellas that basically ran that together. I think they'd had people before that, but they tended to be in the upper age group. And at that time they were encouraged to shield. Yeah. So I went down together with another lady from Immaculate Conception, who many of you will know, Margaret Lynch. And Margaret had enormous experience. She'd been a volunteer at Gerbraid at Food Bank, right. which is a Trussell Trust one. And one, and she'd also been involved, I think, at um, Rock Hill Stroke Mary Hill one. There's been a lot of politics involved with food banks in Mary Hill in the past. Um, but she had been involved quite heavily there. And so had Peter, one of the main guys down at um, uh, St. Gregory's. So they knew one another, they had a lot of experience. So when I went in, I literally thought I was just dumping the stuff and going, but it, it was obvious they needed a bit of help. So, right. I, and, and if I'm totally honest, I was ecstatic to do it because I thought of sitting at home all day, every day, uh, would have driven me mad. It gave me a purpose. Mm. Um, and this this place is a bit like Topsy. It has grown. Uh, last week, I think we fed 310, 320 people mm -hmm. out of that food bank. There's amazing generosity from a number of different sources, either businesses or a fair share or churches like yourselves, and um, donations from very generous parishioners that are what's keeping the place going. And it's been incredible. They did get some um, money through, I think it's North Glasgow Communities or whatever, but that ran out, out round about September. So since then, it's been pretty much um, running on uh, donations. And uh, it's, we're seeing a whole different um, set of people coming according to the guys who've been there before me. There's a lot mm. more people who are maybe been made redundant, um, who maybe were furloughed and weren't managing on their money. Um, they, they literally, they don't need a referral. They can turn up hungry and they will get a bag of food. Um, may not be the most ecstatic, um, you know, exciting bag of food they've ever had, but by and large Sometimes. they do you know, something to keep them going. We also have um, surplus food that comes to us from Marks and Spencers. And there are right. volunteers, I think they come from St. Andrew's Church as well. Um, and they pick up surplus food from Byers Road, Marks and Spencers, and from Mogai, Marks and Spencers. And I do the Mogai run um, once a week or what have you. And uh, we bring it in and that augments what's there. Um, and that's, that's been a huge um, saver for folk. And um, so, so that was what we've kind of done down there um, during the pandemic. And it still goes on and remains busy, I'm sad to say. Trussels and all that have now opened up again. But at the start of the pandemic, we were the only ones, only oh, ones working so, down yeah, there. So no wonder you're getting so, so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not the only Don't food bank, I believe, that you've been involved with? Well, Eastern Bartonshire put out a call, because I actually am one of these that live across the boundary. I shouldn't even be coming into Glasgow, you know. Um, Eastern so Bartonshire put out a call looking for volunteers. <laughs> looking for volunteers to do um, food bank deliveries from Kirk and Tillock round Eastern Bartonshire. And they're only open three afternoons a week. And they have a, a team of drivers who go and uplift the stuff and then deliver it to various people. And um, perhaps they're shielding um, or they're um, self-isolating and aren't able to get out, whatever. You just get a name and an address and a half a dozen bags of food that you take from place to place. And um, been doing that. Some weeks it's very, very busy. Um, I think one of their kind of outlying areas in Lennox Town had to close because it, it wasn't big enough for social distancing. So that means on the days they would have been open, they're doing a lot more home deliveries. Um, we don't do home deliveries by and large in the Wineford. Um, it's, it's uh, folk have to come themselves. So, mm. um, so there's mm. that bit. So that's, mm. that's the food bank side mm. of it. And then they were also looking for volunteers when they were doing the flu vaccination. Um, that they do at the 
Mulgai Town Hall, and they do it at Lennox, uh, at Bishop Briggs, and I think at Kirk and Tillock. So I was a greeter at the flu, um, uh, <laughs> flu um, surgeries, which was fascinating. <laughs> I'm glad I only volunteered one afternoon a week, because it was hard really? going. Well, what did you have uh, to and do now with them? Were, well, basically, you stand at the door and it can be freezing cold or peeing with rain and folk come in and you're kind of encouraged them to sanitise their hands, put on their mask, walk this way and then you'll be processed. And then when they come out, make sure they sanitise their hands again and go. For someone who was a nurse, I'm, I'm desperate to get in there and do the jabs, but, you know, I'm no longer <laughs> a nurse. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm just frowned upon. I'm just a greeter. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, this week is the first time I'm able to go and be a, a greeter for the COVID vaccine, oh, which they're doing exciting. at Mulgai Town Hall. So I'm very excited to be doing that on Saturday. Riveting. Very good. Well, watch that <laughs> <But> space. <laughs> keeps me, it keeps me from wearying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just going to say that, you know, for some people, the pandemic was a chance to maybe stop and, and slow down. You've touched on it a bit, but what, what, um, why, why have you hunted out these volunteering opportunities what, rather than just taking it easy? I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm really fortunate to be in a position to be able to do this. Um, and I'm full of admiration for folk who've been doing doing it quietly in the background for years and years and years. Uh, and they just get on with it and all the rest of it. So it's been nice to have a, a chance to do that. I think it was a number of years ago, I was asked to come along and help serve the meal at the Mary Hill um, Heroes Night. Oh yes. And I was absolutely, yeah, I was absolutely gobsmacked to go in there and see all the stuff that goes on in Mary Hill. It's just amazing. And the people who are doing it year in, year out, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, there's no reason why I couldn't do a bit more. I'm lucky I have the time and the resources at my fingertips to be able to do it. So it's been great. And you learn so much from the people around about you. Uh, mm. And, you know, the folk that have been very generous with their time as well, explaining what all they do, because it's just incredible incredible yes the the heroes night you mentioned there is a people make yeah. Mary hill Mary which hill. happens right. uh once every two years where we celebrate the the community get the chance to nominate uh unsung heroes um who have yeah. been volunteering and making the community a better place so you 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 have helped with that but you have also been a recipient i was i, I was a the, recipient yeah because yeah. you, you say and you were was... blown away by everyone but you know like i can't imagine many people who do more than you <laughs> in terms of <laughs> yeah, volunteering sure so. but, but yes it, 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 i was really i was really honored and it, it was a very humbling experience seeing all these folk who just as i say go in day after day week after week plugging away in the background and um, they really are incredible uh, contributors um, and the community in Mary Hill is, is quite vibrant and all the rest of it. Your Mary Hill activity directory, great shame it didn't um, come out this year in the way that you wanted it to but that's a phenomenal resource as well you know so mm. and I'm sure there'll be people in Mary Hill who are, who are much missing that you know, having access to all the stuff there. Yeah. Yes, I, but you know, you're quite right. We are blessed with a, a vibrant community because, uh -huh, yeah, you know, even just yeah. in that event, there was people, um, you know, there's people who do youth work, there's people who work with older mm -hmm. people, there's community gardens, there's, you know, there's, yeah, there's it's yeah. not one sort of sector no, exactly. of society or uh -huh, volunteers. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So looking... So that's looking been it. <laughs> that's, that's it like it was it. like it was nothing but look at looking back over it do, um, do you have any kind of things that you've learning points that you feel that you've taken away or highlights mm. that stand out for you highlights for me are the fact that i get every bit as much out of it as i hope some of the people who um come along to the things get it there's a real buzz in being involved and thinking thinking you're making a difference. And I suppose when I stopped being a nurse, uh, that kind of feeling of making a difference went out the window. And so I, I get huge satisfaction uh, from just, just 
being involved as a, a small cog in, in, in quite an intricate wheel that goes round and what have you. And it's, it's all the people who are just plugging away in the background, working really hard to make, make sure the communities are kind of a welcoming place and people are incredibly welcoming and very generous with their time and their their uh, knowledge and that's been hugely important uh, and I found that really helpful and um, uplifting and like I say I get as much out of it I hope as as I'm putting in. Mm, I'm glad to hear that so is there would, would that be your message or is, there, or is there another message that you would give to someone who's considering starting out on a volunteering journey? Well, it, it can look quite daunting and you can think to yourself, what have I got to offer? But, but in actual fact, most people have got their time. What could be a more precious resource than your time? Uh, and I think that that's important um, to know that your time will be taken and will be valued and you will be valued because you're prepared to give that time. And I think if you've nothing else, it might be a listening ear, nothing I'm good at, or it might be a doing or whatever, but just giving your time um, will make a huge difference. And so don't sit there and think, well, I couldn't do that. Or I, I don't know. Nobody would be interested in that. Let me tell you, folk out there would, would snap you up in a heartbeat. Well, thank you so much. That's such a true, a true message. And just a massive thank you for, for all you do, certainly for us anyway. We're, we're very grateful and for the energy and joy and, and spirit and productivity that you bring to everything. If you want something done, ask Eileen because she's wonderful. <laughs> she just gets it done. I don't know if I'll be able to get in and out the door. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so 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 My much pleasure. and thank you for being willing to to share with us this evening mm -hmm. i'm sure that it's been very interesting for um everyone here well they all look away still so that's really a, a plus <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a wonderful but there's no there's no chance of them falling asleep 